welcome back. Welcome to part two of the server tour. We are going to move up to the second level now. But uh, I did forget to show you a couple of things, at least one thing, <laughs> on the bottom here. Um, I actually mentioned this in uh, one of my recent Zaragon's Adventures um, videos. And uh, this is the little fishing hole. Uh, nothing spectacular. Oh, did I actually get one? I'm not going to stick around fishing all day, but there are four hoppers down below uh, the solid water stream in case you do make a catch and uh, then it doesn't um, doesn't actually make it up to you, which sometimes happens. And uh, yeah, fairly simple, just a little item elevator there. And um, I think that was everything down here. Oh, and I do, oh, that's what the other thing was, the uh, dirt and gravel ugly little... Uh, chests here. <laughs> horrible, horrible uh, look, especially if you're going to be doing a tour of the place. I'm going to be putting in uh, storage facilities over here. Uh, the same basic design as what I've got over there. But the, um, the big problem with that is, with a limited amount of time, this is not a very important. I mean, I've got a chest and a half, a double chest and a half of dirt, and uh, not even a full double chest of gravel, so it really isn't a big high, high priority for me or anything. And then I did uh, actually, I forgot to show the beacons. Uh, I have three beacons. I have yet to add a fourth because I wanted to save a wither uh, fight for uh, Wifey and myself and uh, get that recorded. Um, but at the moment, I am... Whoop, wrong one. <laughs> I have speed, because speed 2 has been a little bit of um, a mind trip. <laughs> Especially if uh, you get a lag and the beacons start kicking in and out. And haste 2, which makes a efficiency 5 pick go through stone like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> and uh, jump boost 2, which has been a big help. And uh, regeneration, of course. And um, I'm not sure what I want to put the other... Uh, value add. I'm thinking maybe resistance, but I mean, I'm in the middle of a safe base of operations. Don't really need resistance much. <laughs> so, here's a simple, I've just got some uh, um, cocoa bean farm here. The nice thing about this, though, is uh, as you plant, you can hop up and uh, land on top of the next one and um, plant all the way up as far as you want. I did show these before. These are, uh, oh, I think I switched them over to melons. Yeah, I switched them over all the melons, but it's a, a pumpkin or melon uh, farm combined with a, um, a sugarcane farm, or reed farm, whatever you want to call them. And uh, you get about 16, you get 16 pumpkins or melons broken, and then you get uh, twice that for the sugarcane once it's all fully grown. So you wind up getting a pretty good amount. You get a full, with two of these farms, you get a full 64 stack of... Uh, reeds when everything is fully grown, and you get plenty of melons. Um, I don't remember if this is what the cafe area looked like, the vending machine kind of looked like when uh, uh, I was here before. I think I had it decorated a little bit uh, with benches and a table and whatnot. I tore all that out because I wanted to streamline. I, d I just needed to get rid of uh, some of the stuff that was in this space so that you could have a clearer path through. And... Um, Overall, it's oh, not a melon anyway. <laughs> Must have made it all into glistering melon. Um, just have uh, just uh, little droppers here with the food items and beverages in there. And I do believe I also showed the uh, farm designs that I was using, which is um, the pistons pushing up, pistons activated pushing up a uh, a solid block in front of a water stream. And um, see, I don't really need any more nether wart. Let's go over here to the wheat one. Yeah, that one's ready to go. And you just hit the button and you can proceed to replant. And while you're replanting, you pick up everything else. Also, another good reason not to have the speed 2 boost on. As you can see with speed, I'm already missing <laughs> very easily some of these. And you can generally, at normal speed, just run through back and forth planting. And you'll pick up everything and you'll be able to plant on every, but there, see, eventually get a little bit too fast for my own good, so let's uh, just grab all these and move along. Over here, we have a little cosmetic disaster. I was experimenting with some uh, different uh, floor 
looks. And um, I'm not sure what I want to do with that exactly. It needs to be stone on the bottom under here. I need to have a stone look under there. And actually I've got to do some more over there to change to move the uh, stone bricks over so we have that nice separation. Um, and I'm going to keep that design, but I just don't know... I want a more organic look up here, and uh, so I thought maybe using the wooden slabs up here, but this has actually been here since before carpet, so what in the world? I hear something strange. Anyway, this is the uh, cow breeding area. The uh, I don't like this design so much anymore, and I have particles off apparently. Let me turn those back on. Do Details, animations, all on. Yeah. Oh, I know what that noise is. Yeah, that's the next level up. <laughs> you can tell it's been a while. So yeah, the um, the XP and the babies just get swept underneath along a, a water current over ice down below. And then when they grow up, they get suffocated. I believe Zumavoid had a design that was similar to that, and that's where I got the idea. Um, I did something a little more simple with the uh, pigs here, ran into some space constraints, but yeah, you just have the carrots there, the little baby pigs are pushed down into there, and then I think I've got some down here. Yep. Just throw the lever, and they suffocate, and you get your pork down in there, which is nice for trading, because then you just run up throw carrots at a bunch of pigs and on you go and you come back when you want more pork and yeah <laughs> very simple and this actually I have killed all the chickens in there I'm gonna be ripping this out and redoing it um, it was just a little compact uh, chicken egg farm and um, I just never really quite worked out right I mean it wasn't bad it worked but I, I, I want to give it more options and then over here we have sheep and uh, you just grab a pair of shears here. Whoop. And this is something else that I also just kind of threw together for uh, the sake of having a contained controlled area for sheep. But I'm, I'm thinking now that I've used this for a while, it would be more beneficial just to have a bunch of sheep in a pen with, um, oh, I don't know, water flow or just uh, something more traditional. And uh, that way you can have more sheep less control and uh, just go ahead and go to town and uh, have those um, to have all the wool you want so since there's not a whole lot going on on this level it's basically just farms and uh, one side is all just the same sort of farm uh, let's go on up here and here I have just a simple area for uh, harvesting uh, here I've got an apple farm. You just plant the um, plant the sapling. Let's grab some boat meal. I have a lot of stuff in this inventory now. <laughs> so, just plant and break the wood and then all of the ap come on. There you go. All of the apples and saplings as the leaves decay will flow down into the hoppers and you can pick them up at your leisure. Now one thing I have noticed with this, and it's something that's been bothering me with Minecraft UHC, uh, yes, you can let the leaves decay, but I have been getting a lot more apples by breaking the leaves myself than by letting them decay. And I don't know if that's just circumstance or if that's actually part of the code, whether it be a bug or not. And um, you know, I see all the time in the Minecraft UHC, the guys will cut down a tree and run away and let the leaves decay, and uh, maybe they come back and see the um, the drops, maybe not. And uh, it just drives me crazy, because if that were me, I would just stand there, beat the crap out of the leaves, and uh, I, I'm pretty darn sure I wouldn't have to run around for an entire day to wait for a single apple to drop, <laughs> no matter how bad my luck was, because I'll be getting, uh, I get like, you know, like, one apple every two trees, uh, and that does not take a full ten minutes to to beat them, beat the to destroy the leaves by hand. And then this is just the uh, over here. We've got the plain normal um, uh, 
tree farm area. And this is tall enough, just tall enough for spruce trees, but I am constrained as far as the height of each level goes. So I had to go down a little bit and kind of cheat into the, uh, the level below because the actual uh, space down there allowed it in those two areas with the little uh, lower sitting mob farms down there. So I was able to dip down a couple levels to allow for spruce trees, which does take a bit of bone meal to actually make work, but it, um, overall it's just, you know, relatively simple, relatively straightforward, and uh, nice and convenient. And over here we have the nether hub <laughs> portal thingy. <laughs> I was just playing around with this and wanted to see what, uh, what I could do. I had been toying with the idea of um, having smoke rising out from under a surface in the nether or some sort of nether related build. And uh, I had an idea for it. This was months ago, I think probably six, seven months ago. And I never did play around with it. And um, so I wanted to recreate a scene from a movie and inside the nether and whatnot. And it, it, I, I was toying around with the ideas, and actually it works, <laughs> obviously. Just a half slab over top of uh, a piece of nether rock that's on fire. You have to leave one block of air for the fire, and then you put the, nether, the uh, half slab down, and the smoke is able to rise quite well. Uh, this does, of course, pose some <laughs> lag <laughs> issues sometimes, which is uh, why I generally have the particles off whenever I'm uh, derping around by myself. Uh, but yeah, that's the two, that's level two and three, some horses that I brought through from a remote location without remembering to switch the portal to the outside upstairs portal. <laughs> and uh, next episode we'll take a look one level up, we'll have the villager breeding system that uh, I built in underground here, and the iron farm, which will uh, occur, the <laughs> crux of the iron farm is in these little wings right here. And uh, I'll see you next time.